that would be so bad. We wouldn't, mm -hmm. actually, maybe we wouldn't even feel bad because we would be too evil to even think that, you know, to think, to, to judge between the two. But guess what? He gave all of us an opportunity to eternal life. It's all about you to decide to yes. choose God, to choose Jesus, and accept the free gift of salvation. We thank him so much for giving us the knowledge of knowing him Amen. as God Amen. in our lives. We acknowledge him every Amen. single day of our lives. Every day. No day goes by without acknowledging Amen. God, without thanking him, without Amen. talking to him, without reading the word. Amen. No day goes by without doing that because that is how we keep our communion and communication with him. Amen. So we thank him so very much yes, for the opportunity yes, of knowing do. him as God. Amen. And we, we, you know, we've experienced him in so many other, in so many walks of life. That's and right. we thank him for that because that strengthens our faith, our belief. We know that he is there because he has proven himself mm -hmm. to us in so many ways. Mm -hmm. So we thank him so much for Amen. that. We thank him for all of you, our viewers, all of you, wherever you are in America, in this state, Illinois, everywhere else in America yes. and everywhere else around the world. We Amen. thank God for all of you who watch us. We, we, we know you are being blessed because we are sharing the word of God. And he said his word doesn't go out and come back to him empty. Every time his word goes out, it is impacting someone. Mm -hmm. To you, you may sit there and you're like, mm, that word didn't impact me. Yes, thank you very much, but it impacted someone else. Yeah. Somewhere where you may never know. It may not even reach that person today, but sometime in the year or in the month or in the week, they may, tumble across, they may come across this video and it's going to bless them because that mm -hmm. is the word of God mm -hmm. being spoken to them. So we thank him very, very much for, for, for every one of you who watch us, who follow us. And I urge Amen. you to share the link. Share this with, share with, with, with right. your, you know, on your Facebook feed. That's you right. can share it with your friends, with Amen. your family, because you may not be able to stand and preach to them. But guess what? When you send them messages like these, you send them links like these, they may ignore for so long, but when someone that God wants to save through this message mm -hmm. uh, receives it, they will listen and they will, their lives will be changed. Their mm -hmm. lives will be, you know, they'll, they'll accept, accept Christ. That's right. So we thank him very much. We thank him for the equipment he has given us to be able to do what we do. Amen. It's a blessing. Many people would want to do what we do, but they mm -hmm. don't have the means. And we, thank, we don't take it for granted. It's not that we are too rich. No, 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 no. He blessed us to be a blessing to everyone around us. So that is what exactly we intend to do and keep doing until he says otherwise. Amen. So we're going to, to go right into our study today. We're continuing with our topic, A Perfect Word makes perfect people or Amen. a perfect word makes a perfect man Amen. we are looking at that study Amen. there are so many things that we are learning even now even as we you know we share we learn mm -hmm. the spirit keeps teaching us mm -hmm. and opening to us so many new things That's right. so we thank him very much for that we are going to 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 start off with our study and before we start off as as usual, my husband is going to share with us his conversion story uh, to let to tell us where God found him, where you know where he was, his before, his now, and his hope for the future. That's what he's going to share with us. Be blessed, everyone. Amen. Thank you, honey, for that. I mean, first I honor God, who's the creator of all life, and Son Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and all three of those are one. Can't separate the three. They are mm -hmm. all one. And if you are in Christ Jesus, then you are one with them. Amen. Not just the Father, but with them. And I thank God for saving me one day, a wretched man that I was. You notice I says W-A-S, the wretched man that I was. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer like that anymore, like Amen. I used to be. Amen. Because the washing 
of the water of the word of God washed and cleansed my conscious mind mm. from the filth and defilement of sin. Amen. And the flesh, the, yes, the flesh has desires, mm. but the spirit of God outweighs the flesh. Yeah. So the flesh has to yield to the spirit mm. versus the spirit yielding, yielding to, to the, the flesh. flesh. Amen. And that's the only way you can connect with God. You mm. can't walk in the flesh. You have to walk in the spirit, spirit. so that you won't fulfill the, the lust, lust of, of the, the flesh. flesh. And I'm grateful to God for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost that came down after Jesus went away. Holy Ghost came down and those that seek the Holy Ghost like I did, he indwells you with this power so that you can be a witness for him in every nation possible. Amen. You won't have fear to stand up and tell somebody that you've been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Thank spirits God. of God. Amen. Like some people say, I'm shy. Well, you don't have the Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost power don't make you shy. It gives you boldness. Yeah. Boldness to stand up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, I must be honest, before I came this way, I wouldn't speak like this because I didn't know how. I wasn't trained like some people that was trained to speak before people. Mm -hmm. I was never trained to speak before anybody, but the spirits of God. Oh my goodness. He said, if you open up your mouth, he would fill it. Amen. And I'm so grateful that I got this opportunity to be before you and many other people mm -hmm. to let them know that Jesus saves. Amen. For without the blood of the lamb, None of us can be saved. And if you are not washed from that, you're missing an experience that is so delightful and so joyful mm -hmm. and so rewarding until you don't want to leave him after getting that experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm truly grateful to God today. You're watching Today Christian Speaks with me, Tony Coleman, and Ruth Coleman teaching you from the Word of God. We're coming from the King James Version. And so we are teaching you the things that Moses taught, the prophets taught, Jesus taught, and the apostles taught. We're not teaching you anything other than what they taught. We don't teach you our concept. We don't teach you our idea. Mm. We teach you what the Word of God says. And if that isn't enough, then I'm sorry you'll never be saved because it's only going to take the spirits of God and the word of God to deliver you. How can you have faith in whom you have not believed? How can you believe except some person teach you? And how can they teach you unless God had called them to teach you? Now I'm not, I'm paraphrasing, but that's similar to what it says. So my wife and I have teamed up together to come and bring the word of God so that you can be edified. You can be built up. You can be corrected. We had to be corrected. Mm -hmm. We had to learn how to live another life. Mm -hmm. And the only way we could do that is by being corrected from our ways. And after we have correct, been corrected by our ways, mm -hmm. now we walk according to his ways. Because his ways are not like our ways. It's talking about the sinful ways. But once you become a believer in Jesus Christ, then you can start following his way, which will make you a perfect man. Amen. Only when you start following him, mm. you will become a perfect man. And that's what we're going to be discussing tonight. Mm. It's impossible for you to have the word of God, obey the word of God, and not and be a perfect man. Perfect. Yeah. That is impossible. Those it's impossible. Two don't don't mix. And you're you have the spirit. You're perfect, or you're, or you're not imperfect. Mm -hmm. Now, imperfect people are people who wake up in the morning and decide they are going to commit sin, no matter what. Mm. 
But we, the people of God, we wake up seeking the Lord, asking him to lead and guide us throughout yes. the day so that we can walk according to the way he wants us to walk so we can make him happy. Mm. It's not about making me happy, but God wants us to be, he wants to be the kind of father that wants to be pleased in his children. Mm. And the only way he can do that is by giving you commands to obey, just yeah. like your mother and your father say, don't do this, don't do that. And then when you do what they tell you to do, they're happy happy about those mm -hmm. things. Same way with God. God gives commandments. We obey the commandments and make him happy. Simple yeah. as that. That's mm -hmm. not hard. It's not rocket science. Yeah. Every time you will do something your parent wants you to do, you will, uh, they'll be happy and they'll give you whatever you ask them. That's right. They will. That's right. What makes you think God is just going to give That's you right. while you're disobeying him? He's That's just right. going to keep giving you because That's he right. is God. Let us take the example of our, of our human parents. Something you can never do, uh, you know, to your human parents or say to them or uh, ignore. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to do it with God, mm -hmm. the creator of all? So I, our, our best scripture for this series is Psalms 37, 37. Mm -hmm. Psalms 37, 37. I request you to to um, get your Bible or get your notebook and pen so you can note down these scriptures as we go along so you don't you know you can go back and, and do some more study on Amen. on that and if you come up with any question at the end of the program we'll be sharing our email address where you can reach us and you know send any concern any contribution any any question any anything any comment that you may want to, to share with us. We'll, we'll be more than happy to receive it. And even if it's negative, feel free to send it. Amen. So we're in Psalms 37, 37. Psalms is in the midsection of the Bible, somewhere there in the middle. It says, Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. I'll, I'll read that again. It says, Mark the perfect man. This is, the verb is mark. The noun is a perfect man. And behold the upright. Mark them and behold them. Amen. For the end of the, these men is peace. And we've been looking at examples. We started off with Abraham. We've mm -hmm. seen, uh, uh, we've read about Noah. We, we read about Job. All these are perfect men that the Bible talks about as perfect and walked uprightly before God. Mm -hmm. if, they are, if they were human as we are, what makes us think that we can never right. be perfect? That is right. The Bible tells us, David here calls us to mark them. Mark them. Look at them. For example, when, here, when you're in school and, you know, there's, there, there's this student who has very unique, you know, like intelligence. Mm -hmm. They are very bright. They are very careful when they're doing whatever they're doing. They are very nice kids, if I can say that in a mm -hmm. nutshell. Very good kids. The teachers will mark those kids and they'll make sure they get the best out of those kids. They will give them more attention. Mm -hmm. They will, you know, they will strive mm -hmm. to to make sure they, are, they, are, they stay on track, they stay good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And usually those kids come out very excellent. They, they get very excellent jobs. Yes. So w even here, we are marking these men yes. to see what did they do. That's right. They were on earth like we are. What did they do? What was so special about them? What did they do different from what we are doing That's now? That's right. Why are we marking them? Why does the Bible tell, tell us to behold them? That's right. We, we are not just looking at them. We are not just talking about them. That's right. But there is a reason why the Bible is telling us to mark and behold them. And that is Amen. what we are sharing today. Take a look at somebody that is faithful to God is what it's saying. Mm. Mark a person means to take note mm -hmm. of how they act and what they do. If that person is a perfect man, he's faithful to God. He's faithful to his family. 
He's faithful in seeking God. He's faithful in prayer. He's faithful in the word. He's faithful in every way possible mm. to God. Mm. Not doing things that's contrary to God and calling it God, but he's faithful in every way possible so that you can mark him. Mm -hmm. Jesus was a perfect example. And then Jesus says in Matthew 5, 48, he says, be ye therefore perfect mm -hmm. as even as your father, which is in heaven is perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, how can you not be perfect? And you're walking by a perfect word. The word of God is perfect. And when you mm -hmm. obey what it says, it makes you perfect. Yeah. And what makes you imperfect is liars, mm -hmm. people who lie and say things that are not perfect. In other words, they'll lie and call you a name because you believe in living like God. Mm -hmm. Ministers who preach this gospel and teach the gospel, who live by the gospel, they have names for them. And the one of the names is say, you judging. Mm -hmm. Because now the preacher is preaching against something that you may be doing that you need to correct and mm -hmm. come and come to a perfect man in that versus always falling, mm -hmm. always doing something you got no business doing and then saying we're not perfect. Yeah. When the Bible, Jesus says, be ye therefore perfect, perfect mm -hmm. even as your father, which is in first per, uh, is perfect. Now we know that the scripture says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Now, if God was perfect, he created a perfect heaven. Mm -hmm. He created a perfect earth. He created man perfect in his image, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. He was created perfect, but man became imperfect mm -hmm. once he disobeyed the commandment of God. Mm -hmm. Then he broke the perfection. the the perfection mm -hmm. or the unity mm -hmm. that he had with the word he had god with him yeah. and he broke that like many of you do you break you break the commandments of mm -hmm. god you disobey him and then say nobody's perfect and then you use scriptures like all have sinned and come short of the glory of god because now you want to continue to stay mm -hmm. an imperfect person well i'm here to tell you that i'm going to do like what the the psalms 37 and 37 you can read it for yourself mm -hmm. it said david said mark the perfect man mm -hmm. i'm going to mark jesus christ Amen. i'm going to mark the men of and women and mm -hmm. women because we got scriptures to prove that there were perfect women mm -hmm. who walked perfect before god yeah. so the men and women that walked perfect before god who was examples to me mm -hmm. i'm going to follow that whether you like it or not. Why? Because at the end of my life, I have to give an account to God for the things that I've done, whether good or oh, evil. Yeah. I have to give an account to him. Mm -hmm. So why would I walk, take the scriptures and walk an imperfect life, argue with you over something that God said for you to do or don't do? Why would I argue with you over that? I'm going to obey what the scripture says, obey. Mm -hmm. And by obe being obedient to that, guess what? I'm marking my perfect Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm marking my perfect father. I'm marking them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Didn't Jesus. Didn't... Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The scripture says, be slow to speak and quick to hear. I'm going to shut my mouth and let you act a fool. It says to be angry and sin not. I'm not going to get angry and cuss out my mouth like some of you all do. And then, you know, when you tell somebody you can't cuss because the scripture says that uh, a fountain cannot uh, bring forth mm, sweet and bitter. bitter water. Now, if I'm cussing, then I'm not a imperfect, I'm an imperfect person because I'm doing the opposite mm. to what the Bible said. It's the same mouth proclaiming Christ. It's the same mouth say, talking about the love of Christ. And it's the same, same mouth That's you're right. using to curse out someone because they did something to you. Don't you remember a few months ago we were, we were talking about evil for evil? Don't you remember that the Bible told us that right. we don't do you don't do That's back right. what they have done That's to you. Right. 
but you have to do good, you have to be an example. Every time you do the opposite, you're becoming imperfect. You are That's not right. walking like Christ ordered That's us right. to walk. And we go around saying, oh, Christ is our example. He is my example. Mm -hmm. I am in exemplifying him. I am the light of the world. Oh, I am the salt of the earth. I am this and that. Mm -hmm. And you cannot live up to those expectations. You are imperfect. Amen. The, the light of uh, the, 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 when the Bible calls us to be the light of the world, it's basically calling us to be like Jesus. That's right. Because Jesus was the light That's of right. the world. That's right. He was the salt of the That's earth. Right. He, if, we, if we leave ourselves, you know, to be corrupted by, the, by, by sin, by flesh, we are corrupting ourselves with, by flesh. Mm -hmm. That means you become like the salt that loses its savor. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's useless. You, no one can use it again. That means you're imperfect. There That's is right. no perfect salt that That's doesn't right. have a test. That's it right. definitely has to have a test. That's right. There's no perfect light that, that is, you know, dim it's just flickering mm -hmm. it's, no no no. that is mm -hmm. not a perfect light a perfect light is gonna it's going to shine bright in all its fullness so we have to mark christ that's right if he's if we call him our example we have to walk like he did that's right what did he do that's there's right. a there's a someone one time i was listening to what would Jesus do? That's right. And they get they, they kept bringing up different experiences mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. You're imprisoned. Mm -hmm. You're innocent. What would Jesus do in That's such right. a scenario? Mm -hmm. Would he curse God? Would he would he um, call people names? Would he go off? Would he bribe? Would he do all those things that your your mind may be thinking right. or meditating to do? No, he wouldn't. What would Christ do if your child, if, right. if, his, if your child died or they murdered him or her or they, or something happened or an accident and that child dies? Are you, if it were Christ, would he cast God at that instant? That's right. That's right. Would he cast God? No, would he, he do all those things? No, if you're in wouldn't. hospital and they told you you have two weeks to live, if it were Christ, would he curse God at that time? Would he curse out all these medics? Would he hate everyone because you want to die <laughs> alone <laughs> in your misery? Would he hate everyone? What would Christ do? Those are the things that we have to keep asking ourselves. That's and right. I pray that that question pops up in your mind every time you, you're tempted to walk in an imperfect way. Let that question come to you. What would Christ do in this scenario? That's right. What would he do? That's and right. definitely you're going to seek for his advice. Amen. That way you're going to stay walking perfect before him. How come you want your car to be perfect? You want to be able to get in your car, turn that key on. When you get it out of the showroom, you don't expect your car to break down on you. You don't expect to get in your car, turn it on, and then pull the, put it in drive, and then the car don't go. You expect that brand new car to be perfect in every single way. Well, God expects us to be perfect in every single way. Now, let me help some of you that have this kind of mind. No man can be perfect. Hmm. Well, when, when God created the commandments, no, as a matter of fact, let's go back to David. David was a man after God's own heart. Mm. Because David, remember, David had Uriah killed. Mm. He had the woman's husband killed so that he could get the woman. Mm. But yet and still, God counted David as a man after his own heart. Mm. Why? Because David had to repent. He recognized he committed sin before God. And David went down and humbled himself before God. And God forgave David. And David became one of the greatest men that has ever lived in the scriptures. Mm. One of them. There were many others. But David was a humble man. You got to humble yourself and repent. If you did something wrong and you didn't stay in the wrong that you did, did you not know God still counts you a perfect man? Mm. It's when you 
leave God, leave his commandments, and you start living a life of debauchery, a life of sinfulness, a life of wickedness, now you're no longer a perfect man mm -hmm. because the spirits of God cannot dwell within an unclean temple. Mm -hmm. Now let me run to Job 1 and 7, and I'm going to read down. And many are familiar with this story. And in Job 1 and 7, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Now, Satan can't be like God. He cannot be in every place at the same time. That's why it says, From going to and fro. I'm going here and I'm going there. I'm going here and I'm going there. That's why war break out over here. Then something else happens over there. But you never see it all happen at one time. There's periods of times when things happen. But let me continue. And it said, uh, then uh, to and fro from the earth, walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God. Now here's the key, and eschewed evil. That means he rejected evil. He resisted evil. Mm -hmm. He didn't continue to stay in evil. Mm -hmm. Yes, the scripture says all have sinned, but it doesn't say all keep sinning. Mm -hmm. I never read that. That all keep sinning. Now, it does say if any man sin, we have an advocate, mm. the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus makes us the perfect man because he's the sacrifice before that, before um, he is the ultimate sacrifice that God needed so that he could reconcile man back to himself. Mm. And if you repent for your sin, sin, not sins, you constantly committing sin, you're a sinner. But if you did something that you shouldn't have done, mm. then you, you, you repent. repent for that sin mm. and let him uh, cleanse you, like the Bible says, from all unrighteous. Unrighteous. And it goes so further. God is so merciful. He wouldn't even further say, uh, if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders. And the elders will pray the prayer of faith. And if that man had committed sin, it said, it will be forgiven him. You see, God, God don't count a saint, uh, an imperfect person. Now, you have to continuously resist evil, run away from evil. Don't live in it. God don't look at you as a sinner. And you got people who say, uh, no man can live like this. We all are sinners. We all are nothing but sin. I'm just a ratchet sinner. Well, that's you. But I don't consider myself that because I make sure that I wash myself in the water of the word. I keep my mind clean. I keep my spirit clean so that I do not get myself impure. And that's why you got some people preaching an impure gospel, giving you permission to commit sin, mm. using scriptures like um, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is is willing as if God can't give you power over the flesh to overcome the weakness of the flesh. And then he give you the spirit of God that gives you power. Mm -hmm. And that spirit gives you power so that you can mortify the deeds of, of the, the flesh, flesh. not stay in them. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we're talking about, we're trying to tell you to mark the perfect man. There are men in the earth today mm -hmm. that are perfect before God yeah. and they walk up right before God, mm -hmm. keeping the commandments of God, mm -hmm. walking holy before people and before God. Amen. You got to do both. You can't just be before the come to church and be holy in church. And then when you go home or go to work, you're doing something different. You're not holy anymore. Going out to the club. You're not holy. Going out to uh, like they do now in the wedding receptions where they drink and they smoke. And then they go out and party and, and do all sorts of twerking and dancing that has nothing to do with God. No, it's not. It don't work that way. You got to live the life in front of God and in behind 
uh, closed doors. Wherever you go, you got to live perfect before man and woman because the eyes of the Lord is in every place mm -hmm. beholding the good beholding and the, the evil. evil. Put away your evil. Get rid of your evilness. Why don't you concentrate more on what the scripture says instead of concentrating on somebody that's trying to keep you in sin, that's trying to keep you under bondage. Jesus came to set you free from mm. the bondage of sin Amen. and death. In my mind, I see Romans 6 chapter. Romans the 6th chapter. We're going to go to Romans the 6th chapter. Now you notice I'm not reading off a piece of paper because the scripture says if you open up your mouth, he will fill it. Now run down, go down to about the seventh verse, I believe it is. Hold it, go up some. Seventh verse. Now read that. Romans chapter six, we're in the New Testament. Romans chapter six, verse seven. It says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Chap verse 8 says, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Can I continue? Yes, you can continue with that one. Verse 9 says, Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. That's right. Verse 10, For in, in, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in in that he liveth, in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Keep reading. Eleven. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Keep reading. Verse twelve. Let none sin, therefore. I'm sorry. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the last thereof. Read that 13, one again. That 12, one needs to be read again. 12 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the last thereof. How can you be a perfect man and you keep yielding to sin? If you keep yielding to sin versus yielding to God, mm. then that means that you are a servant yeah. to whom you yield in your members to. Mm -hmm. Read the next verse. Verse 13, we're in Romans chapter 6, verse 13. It says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now look at what it's saying. It's telling you to do the right thing, mm -hmm. not the wrong thing, and justify yourself by doing the wrong things and saying you're right. That's not what it's saying. If you're yielding yourself to sin, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about sinning every day. I'm talking about you wake up, you know you're going to sin. You yield yourself to sin. No matter what, you're going to yield yourself to sin. You've already planned it. Already planned, premeditated is what it's called. But now if you yield yourself to the word of God that says don't commit sin. Mm -hmm. When sin presents itself, it's not something that's unusual to you. It's usually something that is normal to you. And you yield to whatever this thing is that's normal to you. And you all know what you yield to. Some people yield to lying. Some people yield to cussing. Some people yield to cigarettes. And then they'll say, oh, pray for me that the Lord deliver me from these cigarettes. I'm a mm -hmm. Christian. I just need to be delivered from these cigarettes. But the scripture says, Resist to whom you evil. yield your members to, mm -hmm. you are a servant of. Yeah. That cigarette don't have a brain. It don't have a word. It doesn't have a whip. It doesn't have a gun, but yet you're supposed to be the most powerful thing in the world and you do this. Your brain should, I should tell you something. You're supposed to be the intelligent one. That cigarette don't have no intelligence, but you yield to smoking cigarettes. Many people yield to sex, yield to pornography, yield to to uh, uh, sleeping with somebody that's not your husband or your wife. You yield to these things when the Bible says resist evil. Mm. Resist it. 
don't go for it. Don't don't put yourself in the way that uh, you'll get caught up in something. Now, if you have done that, now it's time because you hear us speaking. Now it's time for you to go repent and let it go. Amen. Let it go. Get rid of it. Because Jesus haven't uh, allowed you to die yet. You still got that opportunity mm -hmm. to repent and give it up so that when Jesus comes back, that's what he died for. He yeah. died so that we can give up those things. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he came in the likeness of sinful flesh and he condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned mm -hmm. it. It's wrong. Hallelujah to God. It's wrong. It's no good. It is a, a wickedness that will keep you bound in this life. And you, if you stay that way, you can never break free. Like Amen. some homosexuals who say they're Christians can't break free from that life because they're bound by that lifestyle. But Jesus has the ultimate power. If you reach out to him, he'll break that yoke. Mm. If you reach out to Jesus Christ, he'll, he'll, he'll kick the devil out, if I can use that expression. <laughs> if you reach out to him, he's not playing with none of us. He's got power to deliver. He's mm. got power to break yokes. He's got power to help you to overcome every hour. Mm. Amen. Amen. I used to be a Christian. I used to be that way. I used to have my Bible and go see my girlfriend. Right after church, I had my Bible and people say, you're a Christian? Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, there are so many today like that. Like I always say, many people are in church, you know, just to, just for formality. To some people, it's yeah. just a culture. To some people, it's just a routine. Mm-hmm. But it takes the Spirit of God. It takes being born again, being born of the Spirit of God to actually be a saint of God. Amen. You may be in church, but that doesn't make you a saint. You may be in ch going to church every day. Mm -hmm. You got it in your mind every Friday is a mosque day. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday is a Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday it is a church day. I have to go to church. Mm -hmm. And you just have it routinely because that is how you've grown up. Yes. Because that is, you know, we've grown up yeah. doing it. So somehow it's part of your family culture. It's part of the, yeah. your weekly routine. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to. And now you make friends at these churches or mosques. So you have to meet them every time. So mm -hmm. it becomes a social event to you. It becomes useless. It, it becomes meaningless. And that is not shaping you into perfection at all. Mm -mm. You going to church every single church day. How, I don't care how many times a week you go to church, as long as you're not walking as the word directs you to mm -hmm. walk, mm -hmm. as long as you are not mm -hmm. being led by the Spirit of mm -hmm. God, mm -mm. your perfection is fake. Mm -hmm. You're just uh, acting something for, you know, outwardly. Mm -hmm. But on the inside, you're something totally different. Mm -hmm. I say that because I was that. I was that. That was that is the experience. I, mm -hmm. you know, church was a routine. Mm -hmm. It was mm, just a mm -hmm. grown up in church. You know, every every Saturday you have to go to church. Every mm -hmm. you know, every Wednesday, once you you have those midweek mm -hmm. prayers. You, you, it became a routine. But I I never attached too much value to it until the Spirit of God revealed revealed more to me. Mm. what I had to mm -hmm. do, mm -hmm. what I had to change, mm -hmm. what I had to give up, what I had to understand. Mm -hmm. Because when someone is like that, they, they're like having a veil over them, mm -hmm. over their minds. They just can't understand. The mm -hmm. Bible doesn't make sense to them. You can re this can be related easily with so many pastors, kids, so many, you know, those kids who have been, who are born in yeah. staunch Christian mm -hmm. families. They grow up like that and somehow they, these things don't make a lot of sense. Mm. However much you're trying to make mm. them understand, they, they won't really understand. It's like they have a veil over their minds that they won't understand. So they would just act, well, you know, to please you. But it's not something that is part of them. So that person can easily be swayed into imperfection. Amen. Because... It isn't rooted down on the inside of him. You can, that person is just a simple Christian because mm -hmm. they do these Christian 
rituals and all that church going and all that. But that person is not yet a saint of God until you allow the spirit of God to wash you, to rebirth That's you, right. to, to renew you, then, then, you, then and only then can you walk in perfection before God. Amen. Now that said, a mouthful. And we're only trying to teach you based upon what the words say. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to make you think that we are a God mm -hmm. and that we have never done anything before in our lives. That's not true mm -hmm. because we had to repent for the things that we've done. But yeah. the key was never stay in that position. Let God free you from that so that you can walk upright before him and be a perfect person in this way. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to run to Genesis, Genesis uh, 6 and 9. Mm -hmm. Genesis 6 and 9. We're still talking about Genesis 6, 6 and 9, if you can pull it up. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Now here it is, a man that didn't get baptized with the Holy Ghost. He didn't have the Spirit of God. Amen. This was a man that walked up right before God. Some of you all are so hung on, you know, saying you're the Holy Spirit. You use the, the name of the Holy Spirit as if it's like drinking water. But mm. yet you can't live by the name that, that you, you call proclaim. on. Yeah. You say Holy Spirit and he's supposed mm. to be residing in you, but you are a holy sinner. Mm -hmm. Not so. Not so. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, it looks like they slow down your uh, your internet at certain times of the day. That's the problem. Amen. Well, anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining us here in this mm -hmm. broadcast. It looks like the, uh, they slow down the at, at a certain time. They slow down your internet. And so the internet is slow, so then it breaks up the signal. But anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We're going to see you next time, uh, Sunday. Yeah. No, Thursday. Thursday for our marriage seminar. Marriage seminar. So thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time right here on Today Christian Speaks. We love each and every one of you.